What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix and today I'm excited to present to you guys a guide for anyone that's new to old school RuneScape. Throughout this series, I'll go through the general mechanics and interfaces of playing the game, how combat and fighting works, as well as how to get your first 50 levels, the free-to-play skills and how to train them, as well as the quests and bosses available in free-to-play, and lastly, the member skills and the extra things you'll have access to as a member, which is a lot. This video is intended for players that have never played RuneScape before and don't know anything about the game. If you've played before and are only just coming back, this series will give you a refresher and an update on the new things in old school. If you're a regular player, share this video with some of your friends to give them an introduction to starting the game. OSRS is a replica of RuneScape 2 back as it was in the year 2007, but since the release of Old School in 2013, there have been so many changes and additions to the game. The game of RuneScape takes place in the land of Gilinor, a medieval world divided into different kingdoms, cities, and races. It's a massively multiplayer online role-playing game, known as an MMORPG, where you're in control of one human character that you can level and develop into a powerful account. Eventually, you'll have access to high-tier content like bossing, raids, or gaining a prestigious skill cape, or even the max cape. After creating an account, your journey begins on Tutorial Island. Throughout your journey on the island, you'll learn the basics of most of the free-to-play skills, how to begin training them, as well as some guidance on banking and the game interfaces. Here's a quick rundown of all the important gameplay pointers that you'll need to know to start playing the game. To move around, you can either click or tap on your screen or on the minimap in the top right. Your screen should be used for when you're doing stuff in the area that you can see, but when you'd like to travel a longer distance, you should always be using your minimap. The arrow keys are used to change the camera angle, or you can hold down the middle mouse button on your mouse and drag around the screen. You can type in public chat by typing anywhere. Hitting enter will send your message to anyone that's in your area, and if you're stuck with anything and just need to ask a question, almost always someone's going to reply to you when you ask them. When in a chat dialogue, you can either click to select what you want to say, or you can use your keyboard. Using the numbers, you can select which option you want, or you can use the spacebar to continue. Now I'd like to quickly go over each one of the menus because to play effectively, you need to fully understand the client functionalities. Old School RuneScape is available on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. The download links to the desktop client are in the description. Otherwise, if you'd like to download the mobile version, all you need to do is go to your specific app store and type in Old School RuneScape. The desktop and the mobile client have a different look and layout, but they all have the same buttons and options. The first with the two swords is your combat stance and attack options. Here you can choose which type of attack you'd like to use with your weapon, as well as choose whether you'd like to fight back to monsters that attack you. That function is very important for different things in the game. The next icon is your stats tab, which shows all of your skills and the levels they are. You can also click on the skill to see the different ways to train them. Although this is not a guide, you shouldn't follow this to level up, it's only showing you what you unlock. The prices of certain items really depends on what training method you should be using. So once you choose a skill, your best bet is to look up a training guide on the internet. There's a lot of very useful resources out there. As a free-to-play player, you have access to 15 skills out of the total 23. With membership, you don't only gain access to more skills, but you gain access to a lot more training methods for free-to-play skills as well. In section 3 and 4 of this video, I'll show everything you need to know about these skills as well as how to start off training them. The next tab is your quests, mini quests, mini games, and achievement diary. So I'll break that down for you. Quests are different journeys and jobs that you can do for certain in-game characters. Currently, there's 138 quests in Old School, with 20 being free-to-play and 118 being pay-to-play. Quite different from other games, you should always look up a quest guide on the internet while you do a quest. The quest log in-game doesn't show you exactly what you need or what you need to do and can mislead you at times. There's a lot of videos and written guides out there. All you have to do is type the quest name and OSRS on Google and it'll show up. 
Completing quests gives you a range of different rewards, including experience to level up your skills, new areas, new weapons and armor, new training methods, and even unlocking new skills. Some quests will unlock mini quests, which can be found all the way at the bottom of the quest list. These are shorter quests, which give sort of an extension to the reward of the quest before. There's also your Kuren Favor interface, which shows how much favor you've gained in each house of Great Kuren. This is one of the largest additions that didn't exist back in 2007. The Great Kuren is renowned for its catacombs, a huge Slayer dungeon with a lot of Slayer task monsters. There's also a lot of mini games around the island, each rewarding players in unique ways. Mini games are repeatable games and activities that you can do to unlock certain rewards, to train your levels, or even make money. The mini game menu actually allows you to teleport to any mini game that you've unlocked every 20 minutes, so this is very handy. The achievement diaries are a set of tasks that restrict you into certain regions of the game, and once you complete a set of tasks in one area, you unlock an untradeable reward that has different perks. There's four levels of difficulty within each region, easy, medium, hard, and elite, each one getting harder and harder to complete. The bag icon is your inventory, where you can store 28 items. It's worth noting that some items are stackable, like arrows, magic runes, and coins. At a bank, you can also withdraw items in noted form, so they only take up one inventory slot. As a free-to-play player, you can store up to 400 items in your bank, and as a member, you can store over 800. The next tab is your worn equipment tab, and this shows what items you're wearing. There's 10 different slots for you to wear an item, and one slot that doesn't look so obvious is the bag in the bottom right, and that's your ring slot. Rings are a very important type of item in old school, and so is each and every other one of the slots, so your biggest priority after making some money is to upgrade each gear slot as high as you can. The tabs shown on the equipment tab are the equipment stats, which show your baseline attack and defense bonuses for the armor and gear that you're wearing. The money bag is a price lookup to the Grand Exchange, which is the marketplace located in Varrock, where you can buy almost any tradable item in the game. This is where pretty much all of your buying and selling should be done. The bag with a skull is your items kept on death. When you die, you keep three items on death, and dying in the normal world, not in a PvP area, your items will stay on the ground for one hour, and dying multiple times will not cause your other items to despawn. This death system is likely to change into Gravestone soon, where you can retrieve your items from the Gravestone by paying a small fee, but keep an eye out on the weekly game updates to see when this is implemented and how it works. The prayer tab allows you to turn on and off prayers that are unlocked by increasing your prayer level. These prayers have a lot of different uses. Most of them are used to boost your combat abilities, but there's some of them like protect item, which allows you to keep one extra item on death. There's protection prayers, which dramatically lower the amount of damage you take, and rapid restore, which increases the rate at which you can restore hit points. Your prayer points drain while using prayers, and can be restored by praying at an altar, or by drinking prayer restore potions available to members. The final icon in the top row is your magic spellbook. In old school, there's four spellbooks available. The standard one is the only one available to free to play, and the other spellbooks are unlocked through members' quests and activities. Leveling your magic will unlock more spells on each spellbook, as well as increase your magic accuracy and your magic defense. So magic is vital for all accounts. To cast a spell, you need runes, which can be bought at the Grand Exchange, at any rune shop, or you can make them through the rune crafting skill. Monsters drop a lot of runes as well, and the most notable use for magic is teleporting across the map. Teleportation is vital in RuneScape, and magic unlocks teleports to almost everywhere across the map. All four of the spellbooks contain teleports with different unique uses. I'll talk a lot more about magic and the other combat skills in part two of this series. The two smiley faces is your clan chat tab. Here you can join a clan chat to chat to groups of players, to go bossing, to go skilling, whatever your clan desires. You can join a clan on the official RuneScape website, or some clans like mine don't even need you to sign up for them and you can just join and chill whenever. The smiley is your friends list, where you can add players to chat a useful pointer is to use the tab key on your keyboard to respond to the most recent message that comes up. 
RuneScape is a great social environment for meeting new people, and I've personally met so many people through the game, and I've had long-lasting friendships with some players that I met so many years ago. The sad face is your ignore list, where players on this list cannot send you a message and you can't see anything they say. This is useful for spammers or scamming players. The door is where you can log out of RuneScape. If you go inactive in game for 5 minutes, your account will automatically log out. If for some reason you remain in combat, you'll log out after 20 minutes of inactivity. So always make sure you use the logout button when you're leaving the game. There's also the world switcher, which is useful for certain methods and for finding empty worlds for bosses and skilling activity. The next tab is your settings tab, and there's a few very important toggles you need to know about. First is your graphics setting. On desktop, you can change from fixed mode to stretched mode, which makes RuneScape look a lot smoother on a bigger display. There are the sound settings, where the first is music, the second is your personal character sounds, then the third option is your surround sounds. Next is your chat. In this setting menu, I really recommend having split chat on, so you can easily see your private messages. Also, now there's a profanity filter available. By default, it's on, but you could turn it off if you'd like to see blocked words show up when other players type them. The red joystick has some important game options that you can customize to your needs. The next tab is your emotes, which include a set of emotes for all players and some emotes which are unlocked through playing the game. Skill cape and achievement emotes are your way of showing your dedication to getting a skill to level 99, which is the highest tier of emotes you can unlock. I'll be talking more about skill capes and high achievements in the fourth part of this series. The final menu item is your music player. You unlock songs by entering different areas in the game. After finding every single song, you're rewarded with a music cape. Your world map is your best friend as a starting player. If you tap or click on the map icon, it opens up an interface showing where you are. You can search for locations by name or even by type. Using the side panel, you can find what store you need or find exactly where a location is really easily. When you're just starting off, you should always be using this when you're trying to find your way somewhere, especially if you're doing a quest or looking for some sort of monster. Your run energy is shown in both your settings and as an orb next to your minimap. Running exactly doubles your movement speed, and it runs out slower if you have a higher agility level. Since resting isn't an option like in RuneScape 3, but for now, that's all of the basic game mechanics and the starting pointers you'll need to get started. Let's move on to section 2, where I'll show you how combat and fighting works. Attacking monsters and players is a huge part of RuneScape. Fighting gives experience in your combat skills, and leveling up your combat skills will increase your combat level. This is the visible level to other players when they right-click your character. There are seven different skills that will contribute to your combat level. The first is attack, which allows you to wear better weapons and attack more accurately with swords in close-range combat. Then there's strength, which goes hand in hand with attack and allows you to deal more melee damage per hit. You also unlock a lot of new weapons with strength and you should try level your attack and strength at a similar rate. Your defense allows you to wear better armor and better armor and a higher defense level will decrease the chance of being hit. Defense will not reduce the amount of damage you take, which is a very common misconception in old school. It will only reduce the chance of being hit. Ranged is arguably one of the most powerful combat styles in old school. Increasing your range level increases your ranged accuracy and your ranged max hit. You unlock better bows, better crossbows, a lot of extra thrown weapons that you can use to attack monsters or players from a long distance. The next one is magic, and I spoke a bit about this before, but leveling your magic not only gives you access to more spells and teleports, it also lets you wear certain armor. In case you missed it in the first section, having a higher magic level will increase your accuracy of your magic spells and increases your defense to magic. Your hit points level is the amount of health your character has at full capacity. Hit points is trained by dealing damage to any monster in the game. Leveling hit points will let you sustain a lot more damage from bosses and monsters and has a pretty big part of increasing your combat level. The last skill that contributes to your combat level is prayer. It allows you to unlock more prayer abilities, which are very useful for different things. Every weapon in RuneScape has a set attack speed, and when you're in combat with a monster or player, you'll attack in every attack interval for your weapon. Eating food like fish or cakes heals your hit points, but it'll delay until you can start attacking again. 
A great place to begin training your combat levels when you start off is the cows around Lumbridge. The frogs in the Lumbridge Swamp are also really good since there's a lot of different level frogs, and as you level up, you can attack the higher level ones. Cows drop cow hides, and they can be a decent starting money maker. Once you get into the swing of things, you can choose to go through the Stronghold of Security, where searching each of the chests on each level rewards you with a total of 10,000 coins. The Stronghold of Security is also a great place to train your combat skills as a free-to-play player. Every level that you go down has a higher tier level of monsters, and some of them have very valuable drops that you can sell to the Grand Exchange for money. There's a huge variety of weapons that you'll have access to in old school, but the highest tier of weapons isn't so high in free to play. You can check the weapons available to you by clicking any of the combat skills in your skills tab. In free to play, there are seven tiers of metal that you have access to. Bronze, iron, steel, black, mithril, adamant, and rune each one progressively getting stronger in both attack and defense. For melee combat, you should start off getting yourself an Iron Scimitar from the Alcarid Scimitar store. Scimitars give the highest damage per second out of any smithable weapon. So as you gain a higher attack level, you should always upgrade the metal of the scimitar you're using accordingly. At level 40 attack, you unlock the Rune Scimitar, which is arguably the best weapon to train your melee as a free-to-play player. Two-handed swords and the Hill Giant Club are great for dealing really high damage, but they have a very slow attack speed. These weapons are a lot more useful in player vs player situations, which I'll talk about soon. For range training, you can buy bows and arrows from the range shop in Varrock, and you should always be using the best possible short bow you can. Long bows increase your attack distance but have a far slower rate of fire, so short bows in the long run deal a lot more damage. In free to play, you can use arrows up to adamant, but for training your ranged, you should only ever buy up to steel. You can buy magic runes from the Port Sarum Magic Shop or Orbury in Varrock. Magic staves give you an unlimited supply of that rune for whichever staff you're using. As a member, you'll have access to a lot more training spots as a low-level player. Your combat stats as a low-level should be trained at one of the four types of crabs. They have very high hit points levels, which means you'll get more experience per kill, and also they're very weak monsters and don't hit you very often. The easiest crabs to get to are the rock crabs, where you can use a Camelot teleport tablet and run north to Relica to train your levels. As a member in RuneScape, you have access to hundreds of weapons. Currently, the highest tier of weapons is level 75, with notable ones being the God Swords, which are obtained from the God Wars dungeon. You also unlock Dragon at level 60. Dragon is not smithable, so no one can make Dragon, but you can get it from monsters in the game. The Dragon Scimitar is unlocked after completing the Monkey Madness quest, and that's a good quest to aim for as you're starting off as a member. After Dragon comes the Barrow's Gear, unlocked at level 70, which provides some of the highest defense bonuses in the game. Each Barrow set also has a set effect, each one being very useful in different situations. In RuneScape, the entire wilderness is a PvP activated area. Whenever you're in there, you can attack and will be attacked by other players of a similar combat level. If you go deeper and deeper into the wilderness, there's a wider spread of players that you can attack. There are also PvP worlds, where the entire RuneScape world is player versus player, except for the banks. Killing other players can be an excellent source of income, or you can gain prestige in the Bounty Hunter world. If you'd like to start player versus player, I recommend recommend starting off in free-to-play PvP since it's so much more simple compared to members. As you get more comfortable with combat and the layout of the game, PvP can be one of the most enjoyable and entertaining aspects of the game. A major goal for many accounts is completing the fight caves. Once you think you're ready, you can face 63 consecutive waves with the final being Jad, a boss capable of one hitting you if you aren't fast enough. Completing the fight caves rewards you with a fire cape, which is one of the best melee combat capes in the game. Once you've got the hang of the fight caves, you can attempt the Inferno, which is arguably the hardest bossing challenge in old school RuneScape. The final boss in the Inferno is Zuck, which is capable of hitting over 250 damage. And after defeating him, you get the Infernal Cape, the best melee cape in the game. 
As you've probably gathered by now, bossing is a huge part of RuneScape. Bossing can be done solo, but more often than not, players will group up together to defeat the high-level monsters in the game. Raids were introduced into Old School RuneScape at the start of 2017 and completely changed the teamwork aspect of the game. Raids 1, known as the Chambers of Zeric, puts you up against seven different bosses in a randomized dungeon. Raids 2, known as the Theatre of Blood, were released in 2018 and puts up an even harder challenge with even more combat rewards. So that's a bit of an overview of combat. And before I move into part 3, I'd quickly like to talk about the Iron Men modes since you should know a little bit about them before I talk about skilling. At the end of Tutorial Island, you get the chance to choose if you want to be an Iron Man. In old school, there's currently three types of Iron Man modes. Regular Iron Man, Ultimate Iron Man, and Hardcore Iron Man. Regular Iron Man mode is where you cannot use a bank, you can't trade other players, so you can't use the Grand Exchange. You also can't get help when killing bosses, and all the items you get have to be monster drops or bought from shops. Ultimate Iron Man is the silver variant of Iron Man, and in this one, you have the same capabilities of an Iron Man, so you can't trade or use the Grand Exchange, but this time, you can't use a bank. Hardcore Iron Men are the same as the regular silver Iron Men, however, if they die, they lose their status. So every single Hardcore Iron Man out there has never died before. Once they die, their status gets reverted to regular Iron Man mode. As a new player, I recommend just playing a regular normal account when you start off, and once you get better, if you want more of a challenge, you could try one of these game modes out. So now time for part 3 of the video where I'm going to talk about the free to play skills and the bosses. I'm going to start off with fishing. You gain fishing experience for catching fish, and as you level up, you unlock fish that give more experience and heal more health. When training, you'll need your equipment. You can buy all the fishing gear you'll need from the Port Sarum store, or alternatively, you can buy it on the Grand Exchange. From levels 1 to 5, you'll need a small fishing net, which you actually get after finishing the tutorial. Catching sardines and herring is your best experience per hour until level 20, where you unlock trout caught through fly fishing in Edgeville or Lumbridge. Players can increase their cooking level by cooking the food that they catch or by buying the raw ingredients from the Grand Exchange. Cooking isn't only restricted to fish, you can bake cakes and bread or even make a nice bowl of curry. To begin cooking, you can cook the fish that you catch from fishing. Alternatively, you can buy raw shrimps and other raw food off the Grand Exchange. Woodcutting XP is gained from chopping logs. You have access to a wide range of axes, with each tier chopping logs faster and faster than the previous. You should work your way up the trees available, and Lumbridge is a great place to do that because it provides a lot of regular trees, oak trees, and willow trees. With the logs you obtain, you can train your fire making by using a tinderbox on the logs. As a free-to-play player, you should aim to get your fire making level to 50, because once you get membership, you'll gain access to the Winter Todd, a very enjoyable and profitable skilling boss. Mining rocks gives you mining experience and ores. The Lumbridge Swamp Mine is a good place to start training your mining since it offers a lot of copper and tin. Once you reach level 15, you can mine iron, and there's a three rock location of iron in the Alcaran Mine, which is a very popular mining area. With the ores you obtain or with ores you buy on the Grand Exchange, you can use them on a furnace to turn them into metal bars. You can then take the bars to an anvil and smith them into items with a hammer. All of the items you can smith are shown by clicking on the skills icon and clicking on smithing. You can complete the knight sword quest to get to level 29 smithing from level 1 and that'll give you a really big head start as a free to play player. Next is crafting, which allows you to create weapons and other utility items from raw materials. To begin training your crafting, I'd recommend doing the sheep shear request in Lumbridge, which will give you some crafting XP as a reward and it's really easy. Goblin Diplomacy and the Mistalin Mystery also give crafting XP as a reward, but if you'd like to train with a crafting training method, then you should start off with leather items, which can be crafted from soft leather made from cow hides. The final free-to-play skill is rune crafting, which allows you to create runes from rune essence. To start training rune crafting, you'll need an air talisman, which you can obtain from completing the rune mysteries quest or from killing monsters. To train rune crafting, you have to enter the different rune altars located across Gilinor, and by using a talisman or a tiara on the ruins to enter the ruins, you can turn rune essence into that specific rune. 
getting your rune crafting level up will unlock some of the most profitable methods in the game. That's all of the free to play skills, you also have access to a few different mini games as a non-member, namely Castle Wars, The Duel Arena and Clan Wars. Castle Wars is by far my favourite out of the three and it's a mini game where you're put up against a team of the opposite god in a capture the flag battle. In free to play you now have access to two different non-quest bosses. The first is Obor, which can be fought after obtaining a giant key from hill giants. Obor should not be underestimated, he can hit really really high and kill you very fast if you're not careful. Bryophyta, the moss giant boss, is far easier to kill than Obor. In order to fight the moss giant boss, you'll need a mossy key, which is dropped by moss giants. Both of these bosses drop very lucrative items, with a lot of rune drops and other useful weapons. So that's it for part 3, now I'd like to get into part 4 where I give an overview of the members aspect of old school runescape. As a member, you'll gain access to the achievement diaries, mini quests, more mini games, a lot more quests, over 20 different bosses, a lot more PVM content like raids, more areas like Kurend, and you'll gain access to the entirety of Gilanor. I'll talk more about those soon, but you'll also gain access to 8 more skills, as well as massive expansions to all of the free to play skills. I'm not going to go into as much detail for each of these, but I'll give you a general overview of them. First up is Agility, which allows you to take shortcuts and increases how fast you get run energy. To start Agility, you need to train at the Gnome Stronghold course. At higher levels, you gain access to the Rooftop courses, which eventually you'll be able to buy the full Graceful outfit which is arguably the best way to save your run energy in old school. Next is Herb Lore, and Herb Lore is where you combine herbs and secondary ingredients into potions. In order to start Herb Lore, you need to do the Druidic Ritual quest. Attack potions are good experience at a low level, and they're very cheap, and level 78 Herb Lore is actually a big goal for a lot of accounts in old school. That allows you to create the best potions you can in the Chambers of Zeric. Thieving allows you to steal from different non-player characters and stalls. At a low thieving level, you can start off training by stealing from men and women. At very high thieving levels, you can steal from different characters to make a lot of money per hour. Fletching is a skill that allows you to create ranged ammunition and ranged weapons. Fletching is arguably the fastest skill to get to level 99, but it can be expensive if done the fastest way. Getting your Slayer level up will allow you to kill certain monsters that you can't normally kill. And how it works is you get assigned a task from a specific Slayer Master. And by killing the monster they assign you, you gain Slayer experience. I recommend starting Slayer when you have at least level 40 combat. But even then, getting to level 70 combat will make it a lot more efficient and better to train. The farming element in old school is very similar to many other games, where you plant something and you have to wait a specific amount of time before it's ready to harvest. Construction allows you to build a house, and your house is one of the most important things to create because it will really increase your efficiency and how you play the game. Construction is very, very expensive to train, but it is very fast. Hunter allows you to catch different animals, and more common than not, Hunter is done as a money-making method. Chinchompers, which start off unlocked at level 53 Hunter, can provide over 100k per hour. However, a new addition to old school with Hunter is birdhouses, which you can do on Fossil Island. As a member, you have access to a lot more training methods. The XP rates for all of these skills are a lot faster, and a lot of the time as well, they're cheaper. Through killing certain bosses or specific skilling methods, you have a chance of getting a pet as a follower. These pets are extremely rare, and some players spend hundreds of hours trying to obtain them. Pets are a way of showing your dedication and hard work in a specific boss or skill. Although there are some extremely lucky players out there that get pets very early on in the game. Skill capes are rewarded after getting level 99 in a skill. Getting to 99 in any skill in the game takes a lot of time. Achieving a skill cape is one of the biggest achievements for any old school runescape player. 
Each cape has its own emote and its own perk. As well as that, they just look pretty freaking cool. The next big step up from that is the max cape, which is awarded to any player with level 99 in every single skill. Players wearing the cape are RuneScape's most highly regarded and respected players. There are some other milestone capes in old school, but I've mentioned them throughout this video. By now, I hope I've given you a pretty broad overview of old school RuneScape and how to get started on playing the game. The final note I have for you guys is to make the most of all of the resources that are online. There's a huge amount of videos and written guides out there for old school, and be sure to learn about something if you don't exactly know what it is. Thanks for watching my getting started guide. If you learned something today, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more old school uploads. Thanks for watching, and I wish you the best of luck in the world of Gillenor.